Hey guys, this is Evangelist Chris Michelson, and this is Salvation Today. We are live across the world uh, preaching the gospel today right here on Salvation Today. We've got an amazing program for you today. We're going to be talking about resurrection power. Praise the Lord. This is the week of you know Jesus' uh, resurrection, His death, burial, and resurrection. And so we're going to be talking about that today on the program, so you don't want to miss this very special live broadcast of Salvation Today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the broadcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Salvation Today. I'm really excited to jump into the Word today. We are talking about resurrection power. It's going to be an amazing show. I think you're going to be incredibly blessed by it. And um, I'm really excited. You know, this is Easter week uh, where we celebrate Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. You might Somebody might say, why would you celebrate someone's death? Well... <laughs> We don't just celebrate his death because he didn't just die. He rose. Hallelujah. And so because he is alive, we can live also. And so I'm really excited to get into the word today and discuss uh, Jesus' resurrection. That's what it's all about. If he doesn't rise from the dead, we have no Christianity. There's no uh, power in Christianity. There's no purpose in Christianity if Jesus Christ does not rise from the dead. So we're going to talk about that today. And um, as always, I love to see where everyone's joining me from. So for all of you that are joining right now on the live stream, please take a moment right now and let us know what part of the country, what part of the world you're living in uh, and that you're watching from today. So take a moment, jump into the comments. We'd love to hear from you and uh, just see who's online, who's watching, and where everyone is watching us from. I see my friend Kevin Chamberless is watching in Tampa. God bless you, brother. Uh, good to have you on the program today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let us know. Um, I know there might be just a little bit of a delay from my feed to yours, but I would love to hear from you guys where you're watching from. Um, Let's see. And uh, do me a favor, too, and just go ahead and click the like button and the share button. Let people know about this. I believe this is going to be one of these episodes where all of your lost friends are going to want to hear about uh, this episode, this program. And um, we're going to uh, tie in the gospel with all of it. And so I think it's going to be something that uh, you're going to want people to hear and to, to, uh, for, for all of your lost friends and loved ones. Um, so please do let us uh, take, a, take a moment and just like and share the broadcast. And please do let us know where you're watching from. I see quite a few watching online, but uh, not too many people commenting where you're from. So let us know where you're watching. We'd love to hear um, from you guys where you're watching. Um, Amanda and I just got back, if you've been following us, We've been traveling like crazy. The last few weeks, uh, we were in Pakistan. Before that, we were doing revival services in Orlando and in West Palm Beach. And, um, it, you know, and then we got back, and we were home for four days, um, and we flew to Minnesota to do revival services up there. Had an incredible week last week in Minnesota, one of the most... Uh, beautiful things that I've ever experienced in my ministry happened last week in Minnesota. I uh, was do preaching the gospel, made a call for salvation. One of the nights of revival we were doing in Alexandria, Minnesota, and my two nephews came forward to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So that was just an absolute highlight for me to see 
my nephews respond. The older one, Michael, had already responded to the gospel um, a few years ago, but it was so good to see the two younger ones receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior and was definitely a highlight for me. So God did an incredible thing there. We had an incredible week of ministry there. We saw thousands and thousands saved when we were uh, traveling overseas recently. Over 82,000 decisions for Christ in our last gospel campaign. And so we're just excited. We feel like God is on the move. Things are happening. There's a lot of incredible things happening even here in the ministry in Orlando behind the scenes. Stuff that, you know, I'm not going to mention just yet. But when, uh, when we uh, do find out and go public, we will let all of you know what the Lord is doing. There's some really amazing things happening, some incredible doors opening. Um, and, uh, and I really feel like God is giving us strategy and vision to literally see nations of the earth shaken, completely changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we are strategizing. We're working with some of the biggest evangelists in the world to prepare strategy to conquer the world for Jesus. So I'm really excited about what God is, what God is doing. And uh, we'll be releasing some of those uh, important details um, as we get a little bit further down the line. And, uh, and I'm, just, I'm just really excited. I feel like, um, I feel like we're going to see uh, the greatest wave of evangelistic harvest this world has ever seen. And um, I want to be a part of it. I hope you want to be a part of it. And uh, if you're partnering with our ministry, if you're in this praying with us, partnering with us, then you're a part of it as well. And um, so thank you guys for, for doing that, and for being a part of seeing souls saved. That's what Jesus uh, came and died for. Amen. He died for people to know him. And so I'm excited. Uh, let me just look here in the comments, see where people are joining us from. I see Martha Fields watching in Palm Bay, Florida. God bless you, Martha. Thanks for joining. Um, let's see. I've, I know we've got some prayer requests coming in. We're going to pray for you guys at the end of the broadcast as well. So please do send in any prayer requests that you might have. And um, you know, you can put them in the text. Even if, like, let's say English is not your first language, it's okay. The amazing thing about technology nowadays is we can translate it. So go ahead and, uh, and type in the comments. Um, even if it's uh, in another language, it's just fine. We don't mind. Um, in fact, actually, I see some people that, um, that have already typed in Spanish in the comments. I see Juan is joining us from Mexico. God bless you, Juan. Thanks for joining us. Um, I see Evangelist Bati is watching from Pakistan. God bless you. Thanks for joining. Um, I see Evangelist uh, Desire is watching in Gabon in Africa. God bless you. Thanks for joining. Um, I see Marine is watching in Mississippi. Uh, thanks. Thanks for joining. Um, oh wait, she says her husband is uh, in prayer, is suffering in Mississippi, uh, but they're from Kenya. So we will definitely be praying for you, um, Maureen, and for your husband in the name of Jesus. Uh, we'll be praying for his complete healing in Jesus' name. So um, yes, absolutely. So continue to send in your prayer requests. I see um, Mohan is watching in Nepal. God bless you. Thanks for joining. We've got uh, Kofi's watching in Togo. God bless you, to uh, God bless you, Kofi. Thanks for joining. And um, others are just saying greetings and bless you. So thank you guys for joining. Please do take a moment, like and share these, this broadcast. I really believe it's going to be a life-changing broadcast for many people. Now, as you know, over the last couple of weeks, we started studying the book of John. The book of John is my go-to book uh, that I usually encourage new believers to start reading. When you start reading the Bible, I would encourage every new believer or new, uh, you know, more recent um, rededication 
uh, to Christ, I would encourage anyone that's done that recently to study the book of John, to read the book of John at least, and to just meditate on the Word because the book of John is one of these books where um, you're, you're learning about Jesus, the life, the ministry of Jesus, and John had a particular uh, love for the Lord. He had a, he had a revelation of the love of God um, that is really, really special, really unique. And of course, we have John 3:16, one of the probably by far the most quoted Bible verse in all the history of Christianity, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe upon him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so that came out of the book of John. And so that is the core of Christianity. And so I felt like it was time for us to do a commentary, and a, a video commentary on the book of John, go through the entire book, and we're going to make it available for new believers that get saved and so that they can study along and they can begin reading the Bible and learning the Bible. So we've been in the book of John for the last couple of weeks now. and uh, But today, because, uh, because we're entering into the Easter weekend, I wanted to study John chapter 20. And so we're kind of skipping ahead. I'm sure we will come back in our series and we will cover John chapter 20 again. Uh, we may or we may not. We'll see. But um, I wanted to study John chapter 20 today on the broadcast um, because it is Easter week. And so this Sunday we celebrate the, the resurrection of Jesus, that he rose from the dead. So we're going to talk about that here in John chapter 20. I'm just going to take it literally verse by verse. We're going to uh, read every verse as we go and just talk about it. So the Bible says here in John chapter 20, verse number 1, Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went out of the tomb, went to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Verse 2, Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved. We know that that is John. John, uh, who's the author of the Gospel of John, never referred to himself in the Gospel uh, but he, it, when he did refer to himself, he never referred to himself in first person. He always would refer to himself like this, the person that Jesus loved. And, uh, and so she runs to Simon Peter and to John, and she said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. So here, Mary Magdalene, she was the first person to get to the tomb. And she gets to the tomb and sees that the giant stone, these massive stones that would take many, many men to roll in front of the tomb, to close it up and seal the tomb. And as a matter of fact, they would even seal the tomb with mortar behind that massive stone to make sure that that tomb was sealed up. That entire stone had been rolled away, and she was thinking either the, uh, either the religious leaders came and stole the body of Jesus, or the soldiers stole the body of Jesus, or perhaps uh, Nicodemus and, uh, and his friend, I believe it was Joseph of Arimathea, that came, and they were the ones that buried uh, Jesus' body. They took his body and, and they wrapped it and they, they, um, they put uh, the fragrance on there and the, the burial clothes on the body of Jesus and all of the different fragrances that they put into, the perfumes that they put into um, the burial clothes and all of that. They were the ones that put Jesus in the tomb. And so the thought was, who has taken him? Somebody has taken Jesus' body out of this grave. And so she doesn't realize at this point yet that he has ro risen from the dead. The Bible says in verse 3, Peter therefore went out 
and the other disciple, who is John, again, not referring to himself, were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple, John, outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And when he stooped down and looking in, he saw that the linen clothes were lying there, yet he did not go in. So uh, John looks into the tomb and he sees there where the body of Jesus was laying, all of the clothes still laying perfectly right where the body of Jesus was laid, yet the body wasn't there. So literally, imagine this. Here is the body of Jesus. The, he has been wrapped in burial clothes. Remember when Lazarus, when Jesus uh, raised Lazarus from the dead, he had been dead four days, and Jesus spoke to him, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus comes out of the tomb. They literally had to take the clothes off of Lazarus. But here in this passage, literally what happens is Jesus' body is there and all of a sudden it vanishes and the clothes just stay, the burial clothes just stay right there. And, uh, and John sees that the clothes are there, but that the tomb is empty. And so the Bible says here um, in verse 7, And the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Now, I've taught about this elsewhere, and I recently did a teaching for God TV on this particular passage. So uh, for those of you that maybe haven't uh, heard that before, this is really interesting because Jesus, there was a handkerchief that was placed over his face. And what happened is when Jesus rose from the dead, his body came out of the burial clothes. He got a new body, a resurrected body that changed. And we know that that stone didn't have to be rolled away for Jesus to get out because we'll see later in this chapter, Jesus literally walked through walls. He literally walked into a completely locked, closed room and walls were not uh, a barrier for him. Neither were burial clothes. So he ris rises out of the burial clothes. And uh, But one thing is interesting. The Bible says here in verse 7 that the handkerchief that was laid around his head was not lying with the linen clothes, but was folded together in a place by itself. Now, this is really interesting. You say, why in the world, if he rose from the dead, why, why just the handkerchief folded and put away somewhere else? Why wasn't it still there with the rest of the burial clothes? Now, in that time in history, it was very common when a master was eating his dinner, if the master had to be called away to talk to someone, and he wasn't finished with his dinner yet, he would take the napkin or the handkerchief that he was using to wipe his face with, and he would fold it, and he would put it right there by the food to tell the servants, hey, don't throw my food away, I'm not finished yet, I'm not done yet. But if he was done, he would take that handkerchief, and instead of folding it up all nicely and putting it there, he would take it and he would just throw it in the middle of the plate and it would be a mess and that would signify to the, uh, the, the servants and the waiting staff, hey, he's done, we can clean his plate. But if he had to leave and he was coming back, he wanted his food. He wasn't finished yet. So the master would fold the handkerchief and he would put it there beside his food, signifying, I'm not done yet. And I believe that's what Jesus was signifying here. He was signifying. He took the napkin. He took the handkerchief. He folded it up. He put it off to the side. It wasn't there with all the burial clothes where it originally was. He literally took that, 
pick that up and folded it and put it off to the side to say, listen, I'm not done yet. I'm not finished yet. Oh no, I'm just getting started. I, yes, I died. Yes, I rose, but my ministry is not finished. I'm not done with this world yet. I'm not done saving souls yet. I'm not done delivering people. I'm not done raising others from the dead. I have risen from the dead, but there is coming a harvest of souls, a people that are burning for Jesus, a people that will serve me and follow me, and I will rise them. I will raise them from the dead as well. Hallelujah! They will raise from the dead just like I have risen from the dead. And so, my friend, those of you and me who have put our trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, though we die, yet we shall live in Jesus' name. Though our physical body dies in this earth, our spirit will live forever. And the Bible speaks of a day when Jesus is going to return, which I believe is going to happen very, very soon. And Jesus is going to return. And even our bodies, our dead bodies, will be resurrected and will be changed just like Jesus' body was changed when he rose from the dead. Your body, my body, will be resurrected and changed and glorified in Jesus' name. So I'm excited. I'm happy about that day. Even though I die, yet we live. Hallelujah. We never lose in Christianity. You only win. You only go from glory to glory. Hallelujah. You go from faith to faith. You go from life to life. You go from light to light. Hallelujah. God has good things planned for those that follow Him. Even when the devil tries to make a mess, even when the enemy tries to make it seem like there's no hope, when, when the enemy tries to come in like a flood and make you feel like there's no solution, there's no hope in this life, everything's a mess, my life's a mess, everything. My friends, in Jesus, there's only glory to glory. There's only strength to strength. There's only faith to faith. And you never lose in Christianity. Hallelujah. We only win in Jesus' name. How do I say that? Why do I say that? Because I read the end of the book. Praise the Lord. We know that we win. And not only that, I read the beginning of the book. I read the whole book. All we do is win in Jesus. We win when we follow the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you do what is right in the sight of God, He will always honor you and honor your life and you will only go from glory to glory and strength to strength. If you believe that, shout hallelujah, type hallelujah, type praise the Lord in the comments. Praise God. So Jesus is saying, I am coming back. I am not finished with what I've started. Praise the Lord. I am going to come back and I'm going to raise others from the dead. I'm going to save others. I'm going to heal others. I'm going to commission others. And this thing is not over. Hallelujah. It's not over until the fat lady sings. Praise the Lord. He say, what fat lady? I don't know. It's just a saying. But it's not over yet, my friend. Just maybe even tell yourself, you know what? It's not over. Maybe you're in a situation that feels like, man, this thing is about over. This, this life is about over. This, this you know, situation I'm in is, you know, it's just not looking good. Uh, I want to tell you. You know, it's not over yet. God's not finished with you. He's not done with you. He has a plan for your life no matter what's going on. And I believe in resurrection power and that it's coming your way in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Verse 8, the Bible says, Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. Praise the Lord. You see, faith and belief, you know, that's basically the same thing. But faith and belief, you have to see in Scripture that this is the core of Christianity. Everything happens by faith. Everything happens by through believing. You look at the Old Testament, you begin to read all the stories of the Old Testament. You see Abraham, he believed in God and it was accounted to him unto righteousness because he believed. Even he believed things that he had not yet seen. God had called him, said, listen, I'm going to give you a massive nation. I'm going to give you 
I'm going to give you descendants as far as, you know, that, that are like sand, the sand of the sea. And yet he only had one son. And even prior to that, he didn't have any sons. And yet he still believed. You see, faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. It's the currency of heaven. When you have faith, things happen in the spirit. And God is looking for a people who will believe. That's all he wants. He just wants people that will believe in him, who will have faith in him, who will say, God, you know what? I believe in you and I believe you're going to be with me through no matter what I'm going through. I believe you're going to be with me. He's looking for a people who will believe him. You look in the Old Testament, you read Judges, the book of Judges. And all the way through the book of Judges, Israel continues to do evil in God's sight. God said, hey, don't do that. They did it anyway. They rebelled against God. And then as a result, God's protection, they were out from underneath His protection. And all of a sudden, they started getting slaughtered by other enemies. They started struggling. Their land, their cattle started getting you know, stolen from them and all of these things. And then all of a sudden, God sends a judge to redeem them, to set them free. And all of a sudden, they see miracles happen. They see God do all of these incredible things. And then all of a sudden, they start believing again. And then as soon as everything gets going good, then they start disbelieving. They start serving other gods, worshiping idols. And then all of a sudden, they get into uh, trouble again. And so God is just looking for a people who would say, Lord, I believe. I want to follow you. I believe in you and I believe in you so much that I'm going to serve you with my life. My life is going to be used of the Lord. That doesn't mean you're necessarily going to go into full-time ministry. That just means what you're doing right here, right now on this earth, whether you're, you're in the workforce, whether you're uh, you know, in, in, in ministry or whatever, it doesn't matter. Live your life for the Lord. Do everything you can for Him and let your life represent Jesus everywhere you go so that people see Christ in and through you and in and through your life. And so God is just looking for a people who will say, Lord, I believe. I believe and I'm going to live my life as if I actually believe. Hallelujah. A lot of Christians live their life as if they don't believe. You know, they, they, they'll say that they're, they're a Christian, but then they live their life completely contrary to the word of the to, to the word of God. And so Lord is the Lord is saying, if you believe me, then live according to my plan, live according to my word, live a holy life, live a life of loving your neighbor, living a life of of, of living out this book every day. And if you'll do that, God will use you like never before. He'll raise you up. He'll do incredible things in your life. And your life won't just be a life of just mediocrity. It's not just going to be a life of just going through the motions. But He will use your life to change people's eternity around you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's a great place to shout amen or type amen. Praise the Lord. So let me just back up here. I'm going to read verse 7 again. And so the handkerchief that had been laid around his head was not laying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. Verse 9. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away to their own homes. Verse 11, But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. You know, I really feel like the Lord saw Mary crying there. She saw Mary weeping there, and he just couldn't help himself. I'm telling you, when you are in a situation, when you are, uh, are just crying, you're distraught, I want to tell you, the Lord will come and he will intervene. I really believe that, that, that those who love the Lord, 
God cares for them. And the Bible even says that He will hold your tears in His hand. That He will come and He'll be there for you in that situation. And so it's interesting to me that, you know, here John and Peter, they run there, the guys, they're, you know, the, the ex-fishermen, they run in there and they're they're like, oh man, what's going on, you know? And they're, oh wow, he, 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 he's not here anymore, but look, the, the handkerchief, it's put to the side, man, he's coming back. I, you know, well, I don't understand, but they believed, you know? And so then they kind of went away like, wow, something's happening, right? And, and so they don't know what's going on. And Mary's there and she's just crying. She's broken. She's like, I don't understand. And she's weeping. And then what happens? In the middle of her dark moment, watch this, verse 12, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head of the, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Verse 14, Now when, they, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. You might say, well, why? Well, some believe that the resurrected body maybe had changed a little bit, so she didn't quite recognize it. We know from the beginning of the chapter that when she went down there, it was still dark. It said that it was in verse uh, number 1 of chapter 20 that she arrived to the tomb when it was still dark. So maybe it was so dark that she couldn't she couldn't really see this Jesus' face. We don't know, but the Bible says here in verse 14 that when she had turned around, she saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? <laughs> I love the Lord. You know, he didn't, he didn't have to ask the question. He knew the answer. He knew that she was waiting there for him. She was looking for him, yet he asked it anyway. Why? Because he just wanted to hear her heart speak out. He wanted to hear her speak from her heart what she was uh, there waiting for. And she supposed, she thought, verse, uh, um, I guess we're still in verse uh, 15, the Bible says here, she supposing him to be the gardener said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And verse 16, this is beautiful. Jesus said to her, Mary. <laughs> he said one word. He said her name. And that was enough. And she knew. Oh man, I feel God. She knew that it was the Lord. It was him talking to her. And the Bible says in verse 16, she turned and said to him, Rabboni, or teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, your Father, and to my God and your God. And so here she is in her dark moment, She's like, not only is she distraught because they killed Jesus, now she's at the tomb thinking he's going to be there, his dead body's going to be there, and his dead body is missing, and she's broken even, she's broken beyond being broken. I mean, she is distraught. She's crying, and the Lord says, oh, I love you so much, even in the midst of your darkest moment, I'm going to show up. I'm going to come and I'm going to reveal myself to you. My friend, it doesn't matter what you're going through right now. You could be in the darkest moment of your life, but Jesus will hear your prayer. He will hear your cry and he will come unto you. If you've given your life to him, if you're like Mary Magdalene, you, had, you have given up the past. Man, she had a bad past, but Jesus delivered her. He delivered her of the demons that were in her life, set her free. She, Jesus had to cast seven demons out of her. She gets set free. She starts serving the Lord. And then in her dark moment, she's like, oh, I don't understand. Jesus shows up anyway. My friend, I want to tell you, 
in your darkest moment, the Lord will be there for you. He will hear your cry, and I believe He will run unto you in Jesus' name. And so she, she, she realizes it's Jesus. He says, hey, don't cling to me, for I've not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am about to ascend. I'm ascending to my Father, your Father, and to my God and your God. In verse 18, Mary Magdalene came down and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. She became the very first evangelist. She was the first witness. She was the first one to go and witness what she had seen. She went and told those disciples, hey, listen, it's true. It's true. What Jesus has risen from the dead, the message is true. He is alive. He is risen indeed. Praise the Lord. Verse 19, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut. Now, this is important. It was the first day of the week. The Jewish calendar started on Sunday. So Sunday was the very first day of the week. And so that's why in Christianity, we celebrate on the first day of the week is the day we celebrate the Lord. That's the, the, the Sabbath. We, we honor the Sabbath and we keep it. And uh, because all of these things happen on the first day of the week, the disciples were assembled together on the first day of the week. Pentecost happened on the first day of the week. It happened on Sunday. And so uh, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, then when the doors were shut. So here the disciples are. They're in a house. They're locked in a house. They shut the doors because they thought they were also going to be killed and crucified as Jesus was. And while the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them. Walls were not a barrier for Jesus. Locked doors, not a problem. He literally walked through them, walked into their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. Verse 20, and when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Where the dis and Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So if you've ever heard me teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit or you know, even on uh, salvation and receiving the Holy Spirit at salvation, you would know that this is one of the key chapters, key portions of Scripture that I teach the Holy Spirit from because this is their moment of salvation. These disciples in this moment see Jesus risen from the dead. You might say, but Chris, I thought everyone got saved before, you know, when Jesus was preaching the gospel and, you know, even he proclaimed salvation. He did proclaim salvation, but I believe he knew because those people believed in him and his ministry that they would also believe when he rose from the dead. But no one could be saved spiritually until Jesus died for the sin of the world and rose from the dead. If Jesus dies for the sin of the world but never rises from the dead, salvation is not made possible. There's no way for you and I to be saved unless Jesus raises from the dead. If He doesn't raise from the dead, you can't be saved. Why? Because He had to die for the sin of the world and He had to rise from the dead. He had to be resurrected from the dead so that you and I, when we die in our sinful body, in, our, in this sinful world, we can also rise from from the dead. If he doesn't rise, you can't rise. If he doesn't rise, I can't rise. But praise God, he rose from the dead. And because he is alive, you can live also. Hallelujah. And so Jesus had to die. He had to die for the sin of the world. He had to raise from the dead. And then people had to believe on the resurrected Jesus. That's why Paul says in the book of Romans, that the penalty for our sin or the wage of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that if we confess with our mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, 
we will be saved. That's what the Bible says. That's what Paul said. You have to believe on the resurrected Jesus in order to be saved. And so Jesus here, he's risen from the dead. He walks into this house, into this room, and the disciples see the Lord. And they're, he's like, hey, look, it's me. Look at the nail marks in my hands. Look at, the, look at the hole in my side where they pierced me to make sure that I was dead. Look, it's here. Put your hand here. Put your hand in my hand. Put your hand in my side and feel the hole that they punctured me with. I am Jesus and I have risen from the dead. And so the, the Bible says here in verse 20, when he showed his hands and his side to them, the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. They believed. They knew that moment. They realized this is the Lord Jesus, and he does. He did rise from the dead. Hallelujah. So the Bible says in verse 21, Then Jesus said to them, Now that they believed upon the risen Lord, Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, I'm also going to send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Just in the same way, when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, when he created Adam, the very first man, Eve, he took out of Adam. But when God created Adam in, the, in Genesis, the Bible says he formed him from the dust of the earth. He made this incredible human being with his own hands. And then when the body was ready, God breathed into that body and Adam became a living being. You see, my friends, when you get saved, when you give your life to Jesus, when you believe that Jesus died for your sin and rose from the dead and you're willing to commit your life to him, he breathes the breath of life. He breathes the breath of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, into your soul and you become born again. God had to breathe into the, 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 the dirt in order for Adam to become a living being. But because of sin, sin caused us to be dead spiritually. God told Adam after he breathed life into him, he said, you, I'm giving you all of this, this incredible land. There's two trees in the middle of the garden, the tree of the good and evil and the tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will surely die. And so what happened? Adam eats from the tree. Does he die? Not physically right then, but he does later. And what happens then? He realizes he's naked. So for the first time, he is dead spiritually, and he realizes his nakedness, that he is naked without the Lord. He is in a sinful state, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to make us new creations, that we would be born again, not of flesh and blood, not going back into the womb, but being born of the Spirit. And so Jesus here breathes life into their spirit. That's what happens when you get born again. These disciples got born again right here that day. They saw the resurrected Lord. They believed that he rose from the dead and he breathes the spirit of God into their spirit and not their physical body, but their spiritual body, their spirit man, becomes alive again. It's born again. Praise the Lord. That's what Jesus talked about in John chapter 3, which we'll study next week. And so they got born again right there that day. And that's why I always teach on this when I teach about the Holy Spirit, because when you get born again, the Spirit of God comes into you. Jesus said, I won't leave you orphans, but I will send the Helper. I will send the Holy Spirit and He will teach you all things. He'll comfort you. He'll be with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. But then He told His disciples later on to wait until they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, until they received power from on high, which they did in Acts chapter 2. That's separate from being 
saved and receiving the Holy Spirit as they did here, there was a separate baptism of the Spirit of God where they received the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. So um, that's an important side note. So he re they received the Holy Spirit in Acts uh, right here in John 20, verse 22. Verse 23, and Jesus says, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And so Jesus is saying, look, uh, I'm going to send you out now to go and tell the world. And I want you to forgive people of their sins, but if there are some that don't receive me, they will not receive forgiveness of sin. They need to receive me in order to receive forgiveness of sin. Verse 24, Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. He wasn't in the house. Verse 25, Then the other disciple therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hand the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into the side, I will not believe. So Thomas, you know, Thomas got a bad reputation. Everyone calls him Doubting Thomas because, because he was always doubting. He just wasn't quite sure. But the amazing thing about Thomas is even though he was a skeptic, Many times, he became a believer every time. And so he, he might have been like, eh, I'm not sure. But yet every single time, he turned around and he believed. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about Thomas here in just a minute. But he said, I won't believe until I have put my hand in the holes in Jesus' hand. And I won't believe until I put my hand in in Jesus' side where they pierced him. Verse 26, Now after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them, and Jesus came, the doors being shut, and he stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. So again, they were in a locked room. Thomas was finally in there this time. Jesus walks through the walls, and he says, Peace to you. And he said to Thomas, Reach your finger and look at my hand, your finger here, and look at my hands. And reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. So Jesus revealed again himself to Thomas. He is so gracious to us. Even when we don't believe, He still wants us to believe. He is so good. And so He still comes to Thomas again. Look here, son. I did. It's me. I rose from the dead. And Thomas believed. And he answered and said, My Lord. He called Jesus my Lord and my God. And so Thomas recognizes Jesus is not just a prophet. He is not just a good person. He is not just a teacher, but he literally is God in the flesh who came, died for the sin of the world because only God could save people from their sins. He rose from the dead and Thomas believed that this is the Lord. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you've seen me, you have, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So the Lord is saying, listen, Thomas, you believe because you saw me, but I am going to be really thankful. I'm going to be incredibly thankful for the people that believe yet have not seen. And so that he's speaking of you and me. Maybe you've never seen the Lord. I've never personally seen the Lord in my nat with my natural eyes. I know some that have. Uh, I know a lot of Muslims around the world have had Jesus literally walk into rooms. And uh, in matter of fact, one of my friends, he was doing some ministry stuff over near the border of Syria. And he, was, he met a man who was part of ISIS. And the man was, was in Syria in his house with his family. And Jesus walked through the room, walked through the door, just like he did here, revealed himself to the family 
they all got born again in an instant. They got saved. Jesus disappeared. They ran out of Syria. He left ISIS. He left all of that. And he became a follower of Jesus and started preaching the gospel everywhere he went. The same thing happens here with Thomas. Thomas believes. And yet, um, and, 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 and as a result, the Lord starts sending him around the world. But the Lord said, blessed are you. Blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So praise God. God has a plan for you and me. But the amazing thing about Thomas, a lot of people don't realize this, but Thomas, doubting Thomas, this guy that had this bad reputation of being an unbelieving believer, was incredibly used of God in the nation of India. As a matter of fact, I've been to Chennai, India, where Thomas planted churches. He left after the book of Acts after, you know, he received the power of the Holy Spirit, Thomas left Jerusalem and went out preaching the gospel and he found his way into India, started planting churches, making disciples, and then all of a sudden people wanted to kill him because he was coming and converting so many people away from what was then kind of a, a form of Hinduism in the nation. And uh, he starts setting people free, planting churches. He's on the run for his life. He makes his way to Chennai. I've been to the church in Chennai that he planted, was in, went, walked inside the church, was there in the church. And then he was hiding in a cave in Chennai, the, the story goes. And, uh, and he ended up being killed in Chennai, India for preaching the gospel and seeing people receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So this man who was such a doubter, who was, who was such a skeptic, man, when he saw the Lord, when he got a revelation of salvation, and when he got baptized with the Holy Spirit and the fire and power of the Holy Spirit, he, he went out and literally changed the world. And to this day, Chennai and South India is the most populated part of India for all of Christianity. South India is like known as a very Christianized region, and it was all because of the Apostle Thomas, Doubting Thomas, who became Believing Thomas. Hallelujah. My friend, maybe you've been a skeptic. Maybe you've been in disbelief. I want to tell you to turn to Jesus, give your life to Him, and watch Him take your life and use you. The Apostle Thomas, he went from doubting, in one sense, to believing so much, he literally gave his entire life because he believed in the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you, friend, you might be in a place where you don't, maybe you've been a skeptic, maybe you're on the fence with God, maybe you're kind of just in this place where you're not sure. I want to tell you, my friend, Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead. He is alive today and forevermore. And you and I, the Bible says we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And our sin will cause us to be separated from God forever. That's called hell. But God said, I love you so much. I don't want you to be separated from me. I want to resurrect you. I want to give you a new life. I want to give you that rebirth, that new life in Christ, that new life in me, the Lord would say. I want to give you that. But you've got to turn to me. Give me your your whole life. Surrender your life to me today. And if you'll do that, I will use you. I'll set you free and I'll set you on a new course where you're going to see my glory. You're going to see my power. And my friend, today is your day of salvation. The Bible says that now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. And so, my friend, this is your moment. Don't put it off any further. Don't wait any longer. The Lord Jesus Christ died for you. If you were the only person to ever live, He still would have died just for you. And my friend, not only did He die, but He rose from the dead. Hallelujah. He rose. And because He lives, you can live also. So today is your day. Now is your moment. Turn to Jesus. 
Turn to Him right now. Give Jesus your life and surrender everything to Him. And if you will, the Bible says He will save you right now. And so I'm not even finished with this chapter. We still have a few verses to go. But this is an incredibly important moment for you to turn to Jesus. Surrender everything to Him right now. Pray this prayer with me. The Bible says that if we'll confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, then we'll be saved. So pray with me right now. Just pray this prayer out loud right where you're at. Say this out loud. Say, Jesus, today I believe you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the dead. In the name of Jesus, I come to you right now, a sinner who needs salvation. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me of all my unrighteousness. Today, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Make me a child of God. I believe Jesus died for my sin, and I believe He rose from the dead. And I give you my life today completely. Here I am, Lord. Save me now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God according to the Bible and according to the power of the Holy Spirit. You are saved from your sins. You're forgiven. If you prayed that prayer with all your heart and meant it and you're giving your whole life to Jesus, then you are saved. You are forgiven and uh and your sins are washed away as far as the east is from the west, the Bible says. So you are a new creation. I just want to encourage you. I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. And I just want to say the best is yet to come. This is a brand new day. It's a brand new moment. And so please take a moment right now and please write to me. Let me know that you just prayed that prayer with me. If you're watching on one of the live feeds, take a moment even right now and jump into the comments right now. Just take a moment right now. Jump into the comments and say, I prayed with you. You can even write it in your own language. We'll translate it. Just say, I prayed with you. If you'll write that, I'll know that you just prayed with me. And I would be so happy to hear from you. So please take a moment even right now and just jump into the comments on the live feed. For those that are uh, watching this on television, for those of you that are listening on the Charisma Podcast Network, uh, you just write to us. You can send us an email at info at chrismichelson.com and you can let us know that you prayed with us as well. Info at I-N-F-O at chrismichelson.com. That's Chris, C-H-R-I-S-M-I-K-K-E-L-S-O-N.com. Chris, uh, info at chrismichelson.com. We would love to hear from you. And we would love to hear how Jesus has saved you. Now, we've got just a few verses left here. Let's finish out the book of John here. Verse 30, the Bible says, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of His disciples, which are not written in this book. But these were written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and that the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. Jesus died to give you life and life more abundantly. He died to give you a new life. And if anyone is in Christ, the Bible says, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things become new. And so I'm just excited. If you prayed with me today, please let us know. Jump into the comments and let us know. I see Joyce just said, I prayed with you with many exclamation points and prayer hands. Hallelujah, Joyce. That thrills my heart to know that you prayed with me to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I see also uh, Safe Bashar said, I prayed with you. Also, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That is awesome. Thank you for letting us know. I see Terry uh, Hayburn said, I prayed with you also. Praise God. That is awesome, Terry. I am so, so excited to hear that. And uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see. I think, uh, I think that's all the people that I've seen on here, at least right now. But I just want to encourage you guys. This is the incredible, this is the new 
birthday. This is your new birthday. This is your day of salvation. The Bible says, if you'll confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. This is your day of salvation. This is your day where just as the belief, just as Jesus' followers, his disciples, believed on his resurrected body, he breathed the Holy Spirit into them. They believed, they received the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit has come into you. You're a new creation in Christ, and the Holy Spirit is going to help begin to lead you. He's going to begin to just tug on your heart. Hey, don't do that over there. Don't do this over here. I've got a better plan for you. Don't, don't get into that sin over here or over there. I've got a better plan for you. He's going to begin to lead you and guide you. I encourage you, please get a Bible. Start reading every day. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And so if you want to have stronger faith, you've got to begin to spend time reading the Word. When you read the Word, your faith come, becomes stronger. Your faith in Jesus becomes stronger. And I would encourage you every day to read at least one chapter. I would like for you to read three to five chapters every day, just spending time reading the Word. And so you say, well, where do I start? Start in the book of John. That's why we're doing a Bible study on the book of John every week uh, even next week, Wednesday, I'll be right back here. Wednesday at 11 o'clock, studying the Bible in the book of John. And so make sure you join us every week on this broadcast. B excuse me, but I would encourage you to spend time every day reading the book of John yourself and uh, just read it for yourself. When you're done with the book of John, the very next chapter is the book of Acts. You can just continue reading through the New Testament going from Acts to Romans, Corinthians, etc. So I want to encourage you, spend time reading the Bible. Get to know Jesus. He is the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us, John chapter 1 said. And, uh, and if you've missed some of the studies, you can go back right here on Facebook or on my YouTube channel. Here's a great time to go and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. And, uh, and you can watch the live feeds there. You can watch all the previous episodes there of Salvation Today. And uh, you can read, uh, listen to John chapter 1, John chapter 2. We have commentary for already on YouTube. So you can go and uh, listen to those there as you study the Word or listen to them here on Facebook. So I would encourage you to do that. I want to give you guys an opportunity to sow seed financially into the ministry. And uh, if you've been blessed by these broadcasts, if you are uh, just excited about you know, wanting to see souls saved and wanting to partner with us financially, for those that had just started, that maybe just got saved, listen, uh, listen, this is not about taking your money. We have people that partner with us who believe in our ministry, who are like, man, I want to I wanna advance that. I want to continue to help them do this even more. And so that's for those that really believe in this and want to do this more. And uh, f even for those that, you know, maybe you just got saved. If you want, if, it, if God's putting it on your heart, you know, partner with us to see other people meet Jesus. Um, I'll give you that opportunity, but no pressure at all. You can text the word GIVING to the number 474747. And uh, that's uh, an easy way to give by your mobile phone. You can also go to chrismichelson.com slash donate and uh, that's the easiest way just go to our website you can even just go to chrismichelson.com and click the donate tab up in the top corner and um, you'll go to the donate screen you can give there you can we also have a cash app for people that like to use cash app dollar sign cmem and the number one you can also give on facebook hashtag donate and the dollar amount and we just started using Zelle recently. A lot of people using Zelle in their bank to, to uh, be able to transfer money, to give money. You can find us on Zelle at info at chrismichelson.com. I-N-F-O at chrismichelson.com. And you can give through Zelle that way as well. But I'll take a moment, give you guys an opportunity to sow seed. And I just want to say thank you guys. You know, this is awesome. Uh, 
And uh, this is what it's all about. This is why we do what we do. Because Jesus died and He rose from the dead to save people like you and me and all around the world. And that's why we go to some of the most dangerous places on the planet. I've been to the city where they killed, where they killed uh, Thomas. I've been in countries where many people have been martyred preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I could be martyred myself, but I believe God will protect me. But we go to places like that to tell people about Jesus because we really, really believe that the Lord died and rose from the dead. And He has commissioned us just like He commissioned His disciples to go and to preach the gospel. Even here in this chapter, He has commissioned us. And so I just want to say thank you guys for partnering with us. And I want to tell you too, uh, for those of you that are that have, are giving or maybe are giving for the first time, I want to encourage you guys. I really believe that when we go and preach the gospel, when we're here on this program preaching the gospel and people are getting saved, we are not the sole uh, recipients of those salvations. We're not the one that just receive uh, the blessing for that. People that partner with us that make this possible receive the blessing as well. I fully, wholeheartedly believe that when we go, our partners are going with us. When we're preaching the gospel, our partners are preaching the gospel because they're financially sending us to preach the gospel. When we're overseas, you're overseas with us. Uh, when we're on this program, you're on this program with us. Why? Because we are partnering in the Spirit to advance the kingdom of God. And so I just want to say thank you guys for partnering with us, helping us financially to go and preach the gospel. We've got uh, a thing that we're doing even right now. We're believing God for 300 new monthly partners. 300 people who would partner at at least $25 a month or more. Maybe you say, well, Chris, you know, $25 a month, that's not that much. I could take up two of those uh, slots. You're believing for 300 new monthly partners at $25 a month or more. Uh, let me take two slots. I'll, I'll give $50 a month. Maybe somebody say, I, I want to take four slots. I'll give $100 a month. Or maybe you're just like, man, I would love to be a part of this. I'll, I'll start giving $25 a month. Uh, you can do that on our website. So we're looking for 300. We're believing God for 300 new monthly partners. And so you can do that on our website. There's a button that says recurring. You need to click the button that says recurring on our website when you make out your gift there. Go to chrismichelson.com slash donate. Click the donate link. And, uh, and when you come to the donate page, fill that out. Make sure you click the recurring button and you can make that come out every single month. You can choose when you want it to come out right there on the website. And uh, we would be honored to partner with you guys in the harvest that way as well. So please pray about uh, becoming a partner and pray and ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to do? Would you have me partner with them? And uh, if so, Lord, what would you have me partner with them on a monthly basis? And uh, let's, let's shake the world for Jesus. Amen. Let's, let's just bring the whole world, if we can, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I believe it's what the Lord wants more than anything. So I want to thank you guys for partnering with us, helping us to preach the gospel. And I know when you sow, the Lord is going to bless you abundantly in every way, especially financially, because when you sow into the kingdom of God, you're not, you're not decreasing, you're increasing. When you sow, you'll reap, the Bible says. And I really believe God will bless you abundantly for partnering with us in the harvest, in Jesus' name. And so thank you guys so much for partnering with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. We've got a lot of prayer requests that have come in from around the world. We've printed off, I mean, look at these, just a ton of people who need prayer. And so I'm going to pray. We've got people here. Uh, Cameron has a stomach infection we're going to pray for. Um, we're going to pray for... Uh, their mother has cancer, so we're going to pray for him, for them, uh, for her to be free from cancer. Uh, we have 
uh, Mahboub Rashid says uh, she's blind and needs a miracle. We're going to pray for her. We've got uh, Donald is suffering from a rare disease. Danish, uh, their mom's lungs are not working and they need a job, so we'll pray for them. And so they're literally, they just come in like this. And so we're going to pray. We're going to lay hands on them. There are so many more that have come in over the last uh, several days. And uh, we have many here on the broadcast as well in the live stream that have come in. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And I want you to just take a moment and stretch your hands to the screen. And let's pray and let's believe God for a miracle. And if you need a miracle, stretch one hand to heaven. Put the other hand on the body part that needs healing. And let's pray for you as well in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now. On behalf of everyone who has submitted prayer requests for healing, prayer requests for deliverance, financial aid, uh, whatever it is that they need, and for everyone watching or listening under the sound of my voice, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every bit of sickness and disease. I rebuke depression. I command cancer to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you right now for a complete healing in their body. Just as their spirit has been born again, Lord, I pray that you would resurrect their body, that you would make their body new again. Lord, I pray for brand new body parts. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, for pain to leave, viruses leave, illnesses leave, uh, sickness and pain leave in the name of Jesus. Those that need a miracle financially, Lord, I pray you'd give them a new job or you'd give them new opportunities. Lord, I pray that, they, that as they would go out, they would find new opportunities, that you would just present new work and new opportunities and new ways to make money. I pray, God, for raises in the name of Jesus and, and for advancements in different businesses. God, I pray, God, you'd give them creative of ideas in the name of Jesus and supernatural business plans to succeed in their work and whatever they're doing. Lord, I pray that you would save lost family members and, and Lord, that you would touch and save uh, sick family members and heal them as well. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray even right now just for a release of miracles, whatever is needed. Lord, we pray right now for the miracle to come in Jesus' name. And if you believe that, shout amen. Hallelujah. Friend, we're believing God for your miracle. And I even believe miracle power, resurrection power has just been released. And so if you just received prayer, check your body. Do something you couldn't do before. If you had pain somewhere, check and see if the pain is still there or if it has completely left. I believe many of you are being healed even right now as you begin to check your body. You're seeing, hey man, something just changed in your body in Jesus' mighty name. So if you've been healed, please let us know. You can jump into the comments. You can send us an email to the info at chrismichelson.com email and my team will get it and let us know how God has healed you. But listen, it's very important to give God the glory for your miracle and uh, we would be honored and love to hear from you how God has healed you. Many others have written to us in the past uh, and how God has healed them through the program. So please take a moment and let us know how you have been healed as well right here on the program we friends, we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Again, next week, we will be right back here. Same time, same place, 11 a.m. Eastern time next week. And uh, we are going to be uh, jumping into John chapter number three. So you don't want to miss it next week, 11 a.m. Eastern right here on Facebook and YouTube. Make sure you jump over to my YouTube channel when you get done here. Just search Evangelist Chris Michelson, click on my page, and hit that subscribe uh, button on my YouTube channel so that you can begin following us there on YouTube as well. And uh, click the little chime, the little bell there as well, 
and you'll be reminded every time we go live. And that's a really helpful way to know when we're live. Uh, you can click that little bell and know when we're going live. But my friends, we love you. God bless you. Thank you again for joining us. Thanks for partnering with us financially. We will see you next week on another episode of Salvation Today. God bless you. Bye-bye.